This demo is for SUSE Manager in the public cloud. Hello, my name is Don Vosberg, and what you want to do is manage your Linux instances. And you don't, you have some that are on premises and some that are in the cloud, and maybe you have them even in multiple clouds. And today we're going to take a look at a demonstration that will help you to do that. So in this, in this demo, I have some systems that are on premises, one in one data center and three in a different data center. And then I have a group of systems that are actually running on Amazon public cloud. And I want to be able to apply updates to them to upgrade my systems. And I want to be able to see uh, whether I'm vulnerable or not and correct them, not just one at a time, but all of them. It matters to me too that I'm not stuck only with one type of Linux. So you can see in this example, I have Amazon Linux 2, I have CentOS 7, Oracle Linux 8, Slash for SAP, and all of these uh, systems, I can manage them in a way that makes sense for me. Now, in order to get there, I want to install a SUSE manager server. So today I'm going to show you how to select the right image and start that on Amazon's cloud. The, the function is similar on other clouds as well. So I'm searching for an AMI. Uh, that is published by SUSE Linux for SUSE Manager. So you can see I can I put in this uh, search parameters. In this case, I'm looking at SUSE Manager 4.2 because as I'm building this demo, SUSE Manager 4.3 is not yet released. And you can see there are images for both the proxy server and for the server itself. So the proxy allows me to move content closer to where my client systems are. Perhaps I have an isolated region or a security group that I am filtering through. I might stick a proxy closer to them. In today's example, we'll see a proxy that's in a particular subnet actually of AWS. But for most of you, if you want to start, you want to get a server. Uh, Amazon allows these AMIs to be up there from different dates. We're going to pick the one from the most current one and select it. And now I need to size my SUSE manager server. So typically I want a server with multiple, with, uh, at least 16 gig of memory. So I'm going to look at extra large uh, types and you can see I have several choices here. I'm going to pick a T3A extra large. Uh, those images are pretty reasonable on Amazon and they give me plenty of uh, room to expand. So here's T3A extra large. I have four vCPUs and 16 gig of RAM, and that's that's pretty good uh, for me as an instance. I'm going to choose my my key to uh, log in. I'm going to edit my network settings because I have an existing security group I want to make use of, and I have a single uh, root disk. I'm going to up the size of this to be uh, 40 gig on my root volume. And I'm going to add a new volume for storage that is uh, 500 gig. That gives me room for both the database and for additional storage that I'm going to download uh, that I need uh, to have space for to download for all the updates for the different Linuxes that I'm going to use because SUSE Manager will synchronize with those. So I've added additional storage. So now let's give it a name here and let's call it um, SUSECON uh, SUMA4. OK, 
Okay, so now I've given it a name. I've told it uh, what kind of security group, how big to make it. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch the instance. I have to specify an IOPS value for my volume size. So I'm gonna pick 5,000 because it's in the range of what they recommend. And now it's launching that instance. So uh, SUSE Manager will have the packages that it needs, but it won't be registered to Customer Center. But essentially that's how you get started in building out a SUSE Manager server. As you can see now, I am SSH'd into in a terminal session into my new SUSE manager server, and I've registered it with Customer Center using the key that's provided to me for the subscription. And it's added certain modules that SUSE manager needs, but not all of them. Because I'm running in public cloud, I need to add the cloud module. So I can do SUSE connect dash dash list dash extensions. And now you can see that the public cloud module is not yet activated. So I'm going to copy this because this is running clearly in the public cloud as we created it. Uh, and I'm going to paste it in here so that I register this uh, system with the public cloud module. So now the, the elements that I need for my particular public cloud are going to be present for me. Um, in the public cloud version of SUSE Manager, I'm going to add my storage device, that extra 500 gig disk that we added. And I want to know uh, what disks I have. So if I do F disk minus L, it will show me what partitions I have. And you can see I have this dev NVMe 1N1 that I'm going to use for my secondary storage device. So I just type SUMA storage. Uh, and if I do a minus minus help, it lets me see that it just has you specify the device. So all I have to do is paste in my device, dev NVMe 1 and 1. And it checks, checks the disk to make sure that it's there. And now it's added it and created the entry in FS tab. So if I do uh, to look at what disks I have, you can see it mounts that drive in slash manager underscore storage. And it connects with soft links, um, the storage space for both the database and for the spacewalk information, so var spacewalk. Uh, if I go to CD to var, you will see the link there for spacewalk is pointing to the manager storage that we just created. So now I have enough space for SUSE manager to actually complete the install. But uh, since I haven't updated yet, I want to apply all, there are several other pieces I need to do. I need to apply all the updates. So I can do zipper uh, refresh and point it to uh, zipper up and run all the updates. So while this is updating, uh, I want and I want to do it before I actually run the SUSE manager installer because <clears throat> it's going to uh, give me new packages that that I need at, that are part of SUSE manager. So even though this was built very recently in April of this year, you can see that it has uh, a number of updates 
that it wants to apply. It's much easier to apply them before I begin the balance of my install. My update's now complete. My system is prompting me that I should reboot to ensure that my system benefits from all the updates, including a new kernel and everything else. But I want to set my host name to be my final host name for this SUSE manager server. So I'm going to use host name CTL set dash host name so that networking can work right. And this is going to be SUSE con SUMA4 dot site dot com. And now that's my host name. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and reboot this guy before I complete the SUSE manager setup. Now my system has finished rebooting and it has the new host name. I'm going to SUS root. And one more thing, I want to make sure that I have an entry in Etsy hosts for my system. So here's my IP address. I'm going to copy that. And I want to paste that IP address in here and use my FQDN SUSE con SUMA4 site com and susacon suma4. If I have the entry exactly like that in Etsy hosts and I've named it properly, um, I should be able to run now the SUSE manager setup program, which is the same as what you would do on premises. Yes to SUSE manager underscore setup. And now it does not give me any errors when I begin the setup process. And it takes me through several steps of setting it up from scratch. This will not take long. And you can put your organization in because it is creating a certificate. And of course you want to remember that password, whatever you put in here for passwords should be something you can recall later because there are several uh, times when you need them both for the certificate password and the database password. And now it's ready to set it up. Um, it will not find any swap space because <clears throat> swap is not how it's partitioned on this particular image in the cloud. So it will set up a swap file. And because this is running XFS, it will create the file in root, uh, a two gig swap file. Swap is uh, not normally a part of uh, smaller cloud instances, but certainly in this case, because we are running PostgreSQL as a database, databases typically require some type of swap file. <clears throat> you can see that based on the information we put in before, it's generating SSL certificate, and then it's uh, setting things up and restarting all the services that surround SUSE Manager. Once it's done running, and it will say, it will stop saying setup is running and say setup is complete and the next button will be lit up for us to go on. Now you can see setup is complete and I can uh, go down here to next. 
and it tells me that I can, if I can DNS resolve that FQDN, I can go there to complete uh, additional setup and account things. Uh, but first I wanna check the password. As Neil pointed out in our presentation on this topic, uh, you can see who the users are with sat who. Uh, and it shows me there's an admin user and I can set the password for it with sat pass WD. Uh, and I got to type the username there. Okay, so now I'm ready to connect to the web interface for this server. And because it's a self-signed certificate, it makes me accept the security risks. Now I can log into my newly built SUSE manager server as admin with the password that we set. And now I'm ready to go with my cloud built SUSE manager server. Mm -hmm.